Hey, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And today we are joined by one of those up and comers on one of those up and coming teams of the Cincinnati Reds, former first baseman, sometimes third baseman, current outfielder, but God knows he might end up being their catcher one day, for all I know. Hello, Spencer Steer. How are you? I'm doing well. Appreciate you uh, for having me on. Absolutely, man. How many how many gloves do you have in that bag during spring training? Um. Well, I actually have five right now because I'm breaking in two new ones. So, yeah, we're uh, we're we're busy there. Okay. So, do you have to practice at first base? Do you have to practice at third? Are we strictly out there in the left field? Where are we? Um. Pretty much priority of or my number one priority is outfield right now. Um, that seems like where I'll be spending most of my time. Um, but. I'm still doing my infield work, still got to stay uh, stay sharp at, you know, first, third or second. So um, trying to mix in all those is, has been quite the challenge, but uh, but we're doing it. I, listen, we're, we're going to get into the, all the fun stuff, but since we're here, like how much of a grind is that? Is it that difficult or is it not? I think the 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 toughest part is getting the work in but also not overworking the body like it's it's february still and i got hopefully seven eight more months you know of a season left to go so trying to be smart there with with keeping the body fresh and healthy but also like i said feeling prepared and and hitting all those spots and making sure i'm staying sharp at all those different positions well, let's be honest here the biggest transition when they asked you to move to the outfield is that you you were like the social chair over there at first base. You're the welcoming committee. You get to talk to everybody. And then in the left field, it's like, I got nobody to hang out with. It's just me. Isn't that the biggest difference? Yeah, and just the fact that I felt so far away. Uh, you almost feel like out of the game out there. You're just on a little island by yourself. Um, yeah, so that was a pretty big adjustment because I've been an infielder my whole life, so... I've always seen the the game from the dirt and up close. Uh, so once I got to the outfield, yeah, it, all, it was almost like I looked forward to pitching changes so I can go to talk to somebody. Yeah, so what do you – I always wanted to know this. When the three outfielders get together, what the hell do you talk about? Do you talk about the game? Do you talk about something else? What goes on out there? Uh, it's really just a crapshoot on what we're talking about. Um, it could have been the last at-bat and how that ball should have been a strike. Um it could be about, oh, I saw this really funny movie last night. Have you guys seen it? Um, it really it really is a mixed bag on, on what we're talking about out there. So who's who's the ringleader out there? Is it Friedel? Is it Will Benson? Who is it? It's Friedel. Yeah. Um, he's, he's kind of our captain out there. And uh, yeah, he, he, he takes control for sure. Got it. So when you were, you know, last year was your first full year. And when you were playing first base, like I said, you're kind of the welcoming committee for your team. Is that tough when you're a young guy and you have all these, like, let's say that Freddie Freeman comes down to first base. You're like, holy shit, like, that's Freddie Freeman. That's kind of cool. But, like, was there ever a time where you got kind of starstruck at first? Yeah, it was actually in 2022 uh, when I was a September call-up. Um, I think it was about a week or a week and a half after I debuted. Uh, we were in St. Louis. Uh, playing the Cardinals and I grew up 20 minutes from Angel Stadium so I've seen Albert Pujols play you know a number of games um, and obviously he's a legend so I uh, he walked and I just remember seeing him and I'm like you know like oh my god this guy's huge like way bigger than I thought he'd be uh, and that was pretty cool and uh, I mean he's the nicest guy ever you know asked me how I was doing congrats on you know the call up and all that stuff so yeah, that was probably the first first of the many, you know, welcome to the big league moments. So he knew who you were? Yeah, I mean, I think he just kind of figured I was a deer in headlights looking at him. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty sure you could tell I was I was pretty new out there. See, now, if you were smart, you would have brought like a Sharpie out there, had him sign something. Nobody would have seen it. It would have been just between the two of you. It would have been nice. Yeah, I could have just, you know, had a baseball in my hand or back pocket and just have them sign it real quick. So, yeah, growing up, you grew up in Long Beach, right? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, 20 minutes from Angel Stadium. Does that mean, like, 
Mike Trout poster on the wall, the whole bit? Um, not not quite the poster, but uh, I mean, I got I got Angels gear uh, from when I was a kid. Um, you know, bought jerseys, all that stuff. Uh, and all my buddies were Angels fans. I mean, we would, you know, after our high school practice, just go buy the ten dollar nosebleed seats and just go catch a game on, you know, a Tuesday night. So uh, I spent a lot of time at that stadium, and and Mike Trout was definitely uh, definitely one of my favorite players growing up, and and watching what he did at such a young age. So uh, definitely a definitely a big Angels fan here. Um, so playing there this year was also pretty sick. I think last year I met you, was it out at Angel Stadium or was it at Dodgers? I'm Dodgers. Forget, it was at Dodgers. So yeah. have you have you had the chance yet to play in Angel Stadium? Yeah, we went there for a, uh, a three-game series last year. And for a guy who grew up 20 minutes from there, was it, you know, surreal for you to walk on the field as a big leaguer? Yeah, it was like it was honestly just like a, a pretty weird feeling. Um, because obviously I've never been on the the field, but yeah, it was just like I had so much family and friends there. Um and it was it was pretty cool playing against, you know, Trout and uh Face and Shohei. Like the, to me, like just as a baseball fan, like those are just cool moments that that I really enjoy. Have you did you have that moment? I, listen, I know that you, you gotta be kind of cool and play it off, but there is still that moment, I think, for everybody when they get to the show where you're stepping in against some pitcher who you grew up watching or even playing against in a video game or something like that. And you're like, you almost have to calm yourself down and talk to yourself. Be like, okay, we're just both major league baseball players. Did you have one of those moments in the box? Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, when I was up in 22 that last month, majority of my time I just kept finding myself like whoa I'm playing in, in Wrigley and you know whoa I'm playing in St. Louis like that's Albert Pujols that's you know Nolan Arenado uh I'm facing Clayton Kershaw later like this this year um stuff like that like it was uh I think that kind of got in the way a little bit in my first little stint in the big leagues just kind of the the oohs and ahs of it um but yeah once 23 came around it was my first full season uh it became more of, you know, business-like and this is my job. I got to go out there and produce. Um, but to answer your question about the pitcher, it's, it was definitely Kershaw for me. Um, you know, he's been doing it so long. He's a legend. So that was, that was one where I took an extra second and kind of, kind of realized like this, you know, this is a cool moment. Did he start you off with that nasty breaking ball? I'm pretty sure he, I'm pretty sure he went like seven shutty against us. Just, you know, just did it, just did what he does, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, get in line, by the way. You're not the only one who's seen that. Exactly. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so you went up to Oregon. You actually could have been the right handed Clayton Kershaw. You went up there as a pitcher, as a two way player. So I originally, so like my recruiting story was I was throwing at a tournament just so like as, as a pitcher, like closed out a game. Um, and Mark Wazikowski was their recruiting coordinator at the time. I think he's, he's their head coach now. Um, but yeah, that's how they kind of first, I first got on the radar was as a pitcher. And then, um, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I don't really pitch that often. Um, I'm more of a, you know, infielder. Uh, so I actually ended up going up there just as an infielder, but that's kind of how I got on their radar originally was, was as a pitcher. So what's the scouting report on Spencer Steer, the pitcher? Uh, pretty sure, you know, flat heater, mid eighties, <laughs> you know, crappy breaking ball. That's why, Wait, I, just, that's why, that's why I went up as a, uh, that's why I went up as an infielder. I'm not buying that. If, if they were so, at least on your radar, if you were on their radar as a pitcher, I'm not buying flat fastball, mid eighties. No way. I, it, it could have been a little harder, you know, but I'm just, uh, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. Okay. All right. We will get back to Spencer Steer momentarily. But first, I want to tell you about another podcast that's out there. It is called The Deal. It is co-hosted by none other than former Yankees legend Alex Rodriguez. Now, A-Rod, we know he's all over the place in a good way. But here, he's going to kind of narrow his focus a little bit. He's hanging out with Bloomberg reporter Jason Kelly. They speak with big-time athletes and entertainers and executives 
Uh, they talked to the likes of Maria Sharapova and Michael Strahan and Derek Jeter and oh so much more. Now, the deal actually takes you behind the scenes into the world of sports and media and entertainment, dives into the wins and losses and lessons learned along the way. A-Rod has learned plenty of lessons. He hasn't been shy about all that stuff. He has had many, many successes, a few failures. And so he wants to share with you the experience. And it's all there right in the deal. It is from Bloomberg Podcast and Bloomberg Originals. You can listen to the deal on Apple or Spotify or wherever else you download your podcast. So A-Rod, I will say this to you, my friend. Go listen to the deal. It's a show co-hosted. By Alex Rodriguez. Go download it today. So I've got two sons that are 23 and 18, and our senior in high school is into Oregon. I went up there for the first time in the fall, caught a uh, caught a football game against Cal. It poured the entire day on that Saturday. And, you know, you do that walk through the Arboretum to get to the stadium. It was incredible. And he loved it. I asked him at the end. I was like, so what'd you think? You know, for it all day, Southern California kid. He's like, I loved it. It is a great place. For people that have never been up to Eugene, Oregon, give me like the 30-second crash course on what makes it so great up there at Oregon. I think it's just, you know, the university is is kind of the center, it's center stage. Um everyone in that area, they love, they love Oregon football, right? They love the university, they love the basketball team. Um it's just a beautiful state, beautiful state. Um, you know, it's going to, in the wintertime, it's going to rain every day, but I'm telling you the, the summers, the fall, the spring, uh, there's, there's not many more places, beautiful, uh, more beautiful than that state. And, and like I said, it's such a good college town and, uh, just the facilities at that school, the football stadium, the atmosphere of game day, uh, when the football teams, rolling like they have been uh it's there's few places in the country like it so i you know i'd never been up to Otson before and i couldn't believe how small it was it was only like fifty four thousand. but man that place rocks it is no joke and it, we were up there on a day where they actually were honoring the baseball team as pac-12 champs from the season before so i thought it was kind of a i mean the atmosphere is just incredible it's that like everyone says like it's one of the loudest stadiums in college football yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's the way it's built or, uh, you know, the Oregon football fans are just that loud, but it's, it's a, it's a crazy place to watch a football game. And, uh, I just think it's really cool. All the, you know, the baseball fields right there, the soccer fields right there. It's kind of like this one big sports complex, um, and everything's right around it. So I just, I think it's such an awesome setup there. Now, obviously the cool thing is the football team, like they haven't repeated uniforms since like. 2013 or whatever it's a new one every week does the baseball team have have the same gear like do you guys mix and match and stuff yeah i mean when i was there we probably had about five or six jerseys so not like the football team where they've got you know thousands and thousands of combinations that they wear um but yeah nike was was awesome to us uh they they got us all the the good stuff and uh, all the custom organ organ swag so yeah, they uh they hooked it up pretty good for us. So what'd you do? You made it through three years there? Yeah, three years. Did you ever go to class? Yes. Okay, good. Good. What were you studying? Uh so I got a general social science degree. Um if you ask me kind of what that entails, I don't really know for you. Um you know what that means? It means you can hit the shit out of the baseball. <laughs> That's what that well, is. well, the plan of attack was, uh, you know, if when I'm done with baseball, uh, or at least when I was in college, the plan was to be a firefighter. Uh, my nice. twin brother is actually a firefighter, so that's what kind of inspired that. Um, and they didn't really have much much to offer in, in that field, so I asked them, you know, what's a good degree that uh will help me focus on, you know, baseball, and that was that was that good. So you're a twin. Yeah. Are you an identical twin? No, we're uh we're fraternal twins. Um he he always says he's more handsome. I think I'm more handsome. Um <laughs> but yeah, he's uh he's a firefighter and he's uh he's kicking butt, saving lives in Long Beach. So uh pretty proud of what he's doing. God bless him. That is that is awesome. 
But, uh, yeah. How much fun for him, by the way, to have an identical twin brother that's in the show. I can't imagine the pride he must have in that one, huh? Yeah, he's he's been a pretty uh pretty big supporter since day one, obviously. Um, but yeah, he's he's been great. He came out to a couple games last year. Um, his favorite team actually growing up was St. Louis. Uh, he's a St. Louis Cardinals fan. So when I played there in 22, he made the trip out, uh, got him on the field, and he was pretty stoked about that one. So, yeah, I always joke around, you know, people find out my twin's a firefighter, and, you know, I always say he's the cooler twin out of us. So uh, I, I I like to think I support him just as much as uh, I feel like he supports me. Please tell me that he has dropped his allegiance cold turn. I mean, that, that's that got to be <laughs> tough. If he is a lifelong Cardinals fan, and now they're one of your arch rivals. He has to, right? He had to cut it off. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think he's a he's a he's a full go Reds fan now. He's got he's got a couple jerseys and yeah, he's rocking the Reds gear for sure now. Yeah, well, that, how nice for him too that he could put steer on the back of his jersey and it's not like he had it changed. Like, no, that's, <laughs> that's actually it. Kind of a kind of a cool deal. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah. Um. So one of your first big moments, you had a a walk off. I believe it was last year. It was your first one, and mm -hmm. then of course you know Jim Day has to do the post game interview. I love Jim Day; he's hilarious. He does a really good job there on the Reds broadcast. Unfortunately, I think it was kind of a tough go for you. Let's let's give a listen to what happened here. God, my eyes are killing me. I think I got pickle juice in my eyes. Man, that was pretty cool though. Can't beat it. Okay, we got to get to the bottom of this. Is it? Was it in fact pickle juice? And do you know the culprit? Yeah, so we we did some uh, we did some diving into that one. Uh, watched the video replay, and it was Matt McClain front and center. Uh, you know how you know everyone kind of huddles around home plate. He was he was right there in the front and just kind of pickle juice. He had two bottles in his hand, and he he squared me up pretty good. That is a no no. That that you see him right there in the front. Yeah, he's right there in the front. And he got me. So what he's got like these two little bottles and it's like he nailed you. Yeah. Well, we have pickle juice in the dugout. It's good for hydration. And you know, Cincinnati, you can get pretty hot, humid. Uh, you can get a pretty good sweat on. So uh, we got some pickle juice in the dugout just to, you know, help with the hydration. Yeah. But not, not the spraying in the eyes that will, that'll leave that stinging <laughs> sensation. Yeah, see, he's got the, see, he's got the bottle right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, how did we get him back or is this, still in the works i'm waiting I'm, I'm waiting for the right time I'll, I'll you know i didn't forget about that one i'll make sure to get them at some point i mean you're gonna have to up it up you, you can't just grab the nearest pickle juice you have to you almost have to plan this with one of the clubbies like yeah. those guys are around forever and they're always the guys who love to help you out and then turn the other way because they don't want to be known that they're the source here so, yeah, no, those those guys are definitely go to guys if you need anything, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to help with uh, whatever we plan for good old Maddie. Yeah. What's up, Rose Rotationers? The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, is giving cut new customers a shot at turning five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE and new customers can bet 5 bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with promo code ROSE. The crown is yours. The thing I love about your squad is that um, everybody seems like they're 25 and younger. I mean, it's like every key dude that's on this team, you've either grown up together or been traded there in some cases like yourself. Um and here you are, you're all kind of growing up together. Some people would say, okay, 2024, you added some nice pieces from the outside as well, particularly to the pitching staff. Is this a team to beat in the Central? I I mean, I really believe we can be a really good team this year. Um, like you said, we added we added some really awesome pieces this offseason. And those guys have have came in this clubhouse and they're all awesome people. They've they've really gelled with this team, um, and obviously they're they're very talented baseball players as well. Um, so I think that that our focus this year is is to win the division. Um, I think we have the talent to do it, and I think building off what we 
what our what our character was last year or or you know how we play the game we we play it hard and we create chaos on the base paths we had a lot of team speed last year and that was kind of our um you know day one of spring training last year that was our goal was to be a better base running team we came into um camp being the you know i think we were bottom two in base running the year prior and that was unacceptable um david said that needs to change base running is all about character it's a character thing it's a character part of the game uh doesn't take talent to run the bases hard and i really think that is what helped us win more games last year was was the way our base running um you know was really how our our offense got rolling a guy walks we steal a bag blue pit that's a run boom like you didn't have to have you know guys hitting 40 home runs in the middle of your lineup when when everyone can run and, and steal bags and kind of create chaos. So I think uh, we'll be looking to do more of the same that of that this year and, uh, you know, see where we're at in, in uh, the end of the season. I got to tell you, I think it's the most fascinating division in baseball because I think you could make an argument for just about any team there. Even Pittsburgh, who's kind of at the bottom, made some strides, I thought, this offseason with some additions, uh, things of that nature. But, like, I think the four teams ahead of it, you could make an argument for you. I thought the Cardinals with the starting pitching additions in particular, the Cubs just brought back Bellinger and made some nice adjustments as well. I mean, I and Milwaukee, even though they traded Corbin Burns, which I'm sure you're, you know, not sad to see him <laughs> or anything. They're still the champs. And I still think they could be interesting. Like, is that the way you see it as well as a guy who competes against the rest of these teams? Yeah, I, 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 like you said, it. I think I agree with you. Any of these teams, um, they have the talent on paper to do it. Uh, like I said, we do. But at the end of the day, um, we got to go out there and perform. Um, underperformance happens. Injuries happen. Mm -hmm. Just because we were right there last year doesn't mean it's going to be given to us again, right? We have to go out there and and take it and and earn those wins. Uh, it's nice to have been close last year. It's nice to have had a, you know, over exceeded expectations, if you want to look at it that way. But like I said, we got to do it again. We got to, we got to, we got to go out there and perform. And um, I think that's exciting that, that we have a really competitive division. And I think, uh, you know, if we do end up winning, it's just going to mean that much more that, that we really felt like we earned it and, uh, you know, battled through a, through a tough division. Um, one guy who I certainly expect to see a marked improvement from was Ellie Daly Cruz. Simply awesome to watch. Um, he knows he's got to get better, wants to get better. What is the most freakish athletic thing you've seen him do? Mm, that's a good question. Um, well, playing a lot of first base last year, caught, caught, I think the, the ball, he threw a hundred across the infield. Um, that was pretty impressive uh, watching that. Uh, did that hurt by the, the way? Most, what was that? Did that hurt? Yeah, that one that one felt a little different than than uh, than some of the others. Uh, yeah, man, he's I mean, he's just a the stuff he does on a baseball field. Um, you know, and I've never played with him before, and, and a lot of guys haven't. Um, but guys like McLean, uh, Strand, guys who play with him in triple A, they just kind of said, you know, just. You'll you'll see some stuff and uh first week, sure enough, he almost hits a ball out of the stadium. Um grounds ball grounds the ball at first base, beats it out. I mean, just the stuff he does, it's it it felt like every time he was up to bat, it was it was must watch because you didn't know what he was gonna do. Yeah. Um one of the guys who got a chance in your organization is a guy who my team unfortunately traded in Will Benson. I'm thrilled for him. Great kid. But are you really allowed to pimp spring training homers like he did? That's just beaming, man. He's just such a competitor. Um, and to be honest with you, man, he's just so locked in right now. He really, really, when guys say they want to get better, he he lives that, right? Like you, you could see him every day putting in the work. And you're like, you hear him talk about how he wants to get better, but he's actually showing how much he wants to get better. Like he is so locked in and just 
just the details, just the small little details. Um, and I'm just pumped for him, man, because he he earns he earns all the success that's coming his way because he's just the best guy you could have uh, on your team. Unbelievable teammate, unbelievable person. Um, and like I said, man, he he works harder than anybody. So you didn't answer my question. Are you really allowed to pimp a spring training homer? I think you're Will Benson. You look like that. Absolutely. <laughs> Who's going to hold you accountable when you look like him? He looks like an Under Armour mannequin. It's a great call. God almighty, you nailed that one. Holy mm -hmm. shit. You, that's perfect. I'm going to have to put him in my phone under that. Under Armour mannequin. <laughs> um, I saw you guys hooping it up. I think this was recent. You know, every team in spring training has got one of those hoops outside. Yeah. And so he'll tell you, I was going to go to Duke if I hadn't been drafted by the then Indians in the first round at age 17, I would have gone to Duke played baseball and tried to walk on for coach K as well. Is he still trying to sell that line to everybody? Not really. Cause I think everyone just knows it. I don't even think he really needs to say it anymore. Um, so his game's that strong. He can shoot. He can shoot. So we do a, we do a three point. Uh, we did a three point competition last year. We're doing another one this year. Um, you know, with the whole camp, you know, prizes included. Uh, but he was kind of the odds on favorite last year going into it. You know, he was just expected to win. Um, and he ended up, he ended up not. So I think, uh, I think, uh, he's coming back with a little vengeance this year. He's been getting his shots up. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, he's, he's just kind of one of those freak athletes that, uh, you know, you're just not shocked by hearing stuff like that. Okay, hold on. Who won? Uh, Will Myers won last year. Will Myers? Yeah. Guy looks like he's always sleeping. Will Myers <laughs> beat him? <laughs> Will Myers. I mean, it's it's to me, it came down to more pressure than anything. Like, I'm not that bad of a shooter, but I folded. Like, I only made one shot, and I think it was out of 15. Ooh. Like, Ooh. I just straight up folded under pressure. You got the whole camp watching. Um, you know, you got you got the timer going down. Like, I just the moment was too big for me. So, well, what's the what's the prize? There's I love that picture of Wilma. Can you believe that's how he went on national TV the day he won There's rookie no of way. the year? Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Knowing Will, uh, that does not surprise me one bit. Over under a, a number of combs or brushes the guy owns is set at a half. I might take the under. I think he's more just put the put the hands through the hair kind of guy finger and comb. just rolls with it. Yeah. Yeah. Finger comb. Yeah. hundred percent. That is funny. Yeah, that's good. So um you are not the first major leaguer to have your first at bat end up in a home run. It's very cool. It's not a super long list, but you're not the first. However, I think you might be the first one to have an active major leaguer who might end up in Cooperstown actually call it. Have you heard Joey Votto's call? I have. Okay. Yeah. For for people that haven't, here we go. This is Spencer Steer's first major league at bat and first hit. Here we go. How Spencer Steer can capitalize as he hits a deep fly ball to center field. Richard going back and Spencer Steer, welcome to the Queen City with your first major league hit, major league home run. And we needed it, buddy. Keep going. Congratulations. How freaking awesome is that, that Joey Votto, who was injured at the time, was in the booth for that? Yeah, that, that was that was a pretty unbelievable thing, um, especially being a teammate of his the next year uh, and really getting to know him. Uh, that That is obviously a, a moment that I'll remember my whole life, but, I mean, it just makes it a whole lot cooler. Uh Having having a guy, a legend, a Reds legend, Joey Votto on that call, that was a uh, pretty unreal timing. Did you black out around the bases? Yeah, I always tell everyone I hit the ball, and it, I just I don't even know what happened after that. <laughs> um, I just remember just being focused on like putting one foot in front of the other and touching the bases because it was one of those moments where it's like you don't even feel your legs; you're, you just feel like you're floating. Um, and yeah, it, it, I still to this day, it's just like crazy to me that I'm even here. Like sometimes I'm like the cliches of, of, you know, I, I pinch myself every day. It's just sometimes when I see 
videos or, uh, you know, just think about my debut or whatever it is. Sometimes I just think like, this is just crazy. This is even happening. You deserve it, man. You, you belong here. That, yeah. No, it's Thank so you. true. I uh, don't know if you follow Joey Votto on social media, do you? I do. Yeah. I have the pleasure of watching his, uh, watch his Instagram posts from time okay. to time. Yeah. So did you see the one in the car wash over the weekend? <laughs> I did see that one. Yeah, here we go. For I, here we go. <laughs> this is not spring training. <laughs> I think he posted another one too. He was like in the kitchen making food. Same kind of deal. This isn't spring training. Do we have to nail him? It looks like he's wearing a Cardinals hat. I mean, it does look like one. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he got it from your twin brother or what before he, <laughs> before he went in there. But uh, what what is your best Votto story? Because everybody's got one. Oh, I got a lot. Um, I, I'll tell this one just because I think uh, this is a good. It's a good way to portray how he is as a person and teammate. Um we were hitting BP in Anaheim and I had two of my, so I didn't mention this, but I have a twin brother and then I have two older brothers who are twins. So we have two sets of twins in my family. Um, so a little backstory to that. So my two older brothers who are twins are standing behind home plate and I go up to Joey or Joey comes up to me actually. And he goes, Hey, those are your two brothers, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, I'm going to go say what's up to them after uh, after a round. That's cool. And I was like, yeah, they love it. Um, I've mentioned, you know, my brother's names before, but in that moment, that day, I didn't say what their names were. And uh, he goes up and he's like, Connor and Tyler, right? And I was just taken back. I'm like, he knows my older brother's names. Like, I don't remember telling him that. Um, and he goes up to him and you know, says hello. And he's like, you know, Tyler, you recently got married. Like, that's awesome. Congratulations. And I was just taken back. I'm like, wow, like this guy is a future Hall of Famer and he cares enough to to know my older brother's names. And, you know, that one of them recently got married. Like, I just I was blown away by that. I thought that was uh, I thought that was super cool of him. And obviously my my older brothers after were like, Oh my God, we met Joey Votto. Like that was crazy. Like, um, but yeah, that's a story that I've, I've told to some people that just kind of, that's a good way of, of describing who Joey is. Um, just a, just a really good person, but cause everyone just knows him as a baseball player. That's incredible. What, what the hell is he doing? Google searches? Is he, is he trying to follow them on, uh, on Facebook? What, what's going maybe, on? Maybe there? he's just spending a lot of time on Instagram. Who knows? But uh, I thought that one was pretty cool. That's amazing. So, by the way, you can't slide the whole two sets of twins past me. These are older brothers by how much? Uh, two years. About two years. Are they identical or are they fraternal? No, they're fraternal. Yeah. So, everybody tells me the twins have their own language. So, and that's accurate with fraternals? Um, it depends on what you're talking about. Well, because I mean, me and my brother, like me and my like, we've had a couple like instances where, like, you know, like sometimes there's a song stuck in your head and you start like humming it or like singing it. There's been a couple instances like growing up where like it'd just be like quiet and we're just like sitting in the living room and then we just start like humming the same song or like singing the same song. We've had a couple instances like that where it's been like a little weird. Um, but as far as the language part, I, I'm not really sure what you're talking about. Oh, because I, I always thought that was a big deal that I've been told that the twins do have their own language, that the, the, you just speak it amongst yourselves. And if that's the case, then does that mean that they're, the language is different for your older brothers and it wouldn't cross pollinate with the younger brothers? But it, I guess you haven't heard this. No, I haven't. But I, I can tell you there has like there there are some times where I feel like we're, we're just thinking the same thing without saying it. Um, yeah. There's that's definitely weird. something with there's some there's definitely something, uh, but I'm not really sure how to put a finger on it. But yeah, having a twin's pretty cool, honestly. 
It's pretty sweet. And then getting drafted by the Twins. Which was also, yeah, they ate that one up pretty. They ate that one up after I got drafted. You know, me having a twin and two older brothers who are twins and getting drafted by the twins. So they had fun with that one. That's incredible. All right. Um, we're going to let you go. But before that, uh, congratulations on getting engaged uh, during the off season. Were you more nervous stepping into the batter's box for the first time in the show or proposing? Oh, believe it or not, I think I think it was a proposing. I I I just remember like like her hand was on my heart for that picture, and I she was like, "Why is your heart beating so fast?" And this is like five minutes after it's all done, and I was just like, "I've never been more nervous for anything in my life." So definitely that one. This is beautiful. Where where did this happen? This uh this is up in uh, Vail, Colorado. Oh wow! Yeah, unbelievable place. Okay, baller, rookie deal, Vail, Colorado. <laughs> Can't wait till we start hitting those arbitration years. <laughs> Holy smokes. Do we, have oh, a, yeah. do we have a date yet for this? Uh, Probably uh, off season of 2025. Okay. For the okay, wedding. So. Plenty of time. Yeah, right, so there's right. plenty of time to plan it. As somebody who's been married almost 27 years, I will just give this advice. I know it's unsolicited, but here we go. <laughs> Be involved in this stuff. Like, God willing, you only do this thing once. So the, all the guys are like, oh, whatever. Now, you don't have to do every little thing. You don't have to see 18 different, you know, florists and photographers and all that stuff. But have your hands in it a little bit. This day is much about you as it is about her. Just remember that. You want a little say. I appreciate it. That's really good advice. Yeah. You don't have to. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. Some guys are like, oh, my God, just make sure I show up on time. No, no. Yeah. You want to be with this person, God willing, the rest of your life. Let's. Let's take a little ownership, right? Heck yeah, I agree. That's okay. great advice. There you go. Good, good. Uh, awesome. This was a blast. I, I appreciate the time. It was great uh, getting to meet you last year at Dodger Stadium. And now, uh, you know, big fan. I, I enjoy watching you guys in the Reds. They are, you guys are an electric bunch and a ton of fun this year. So go tell all those guys that say hello there in the clubhouse and stay healthy and go have a great start to your season. All right. Thanks, Chris. I really appreciate you uh, having me on, and hopefully we uh, cross paths again this year. We certainly will. We certainly will. For our one-of-a-kind producer, Robbie Scirocco, and one of the many twins in the Steer family, <laughs> Spencer, who's the younger set of twins. But Joey Votto already knows all this stuff. I am Chris Rose, and we'll see you next time here on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.